Hey everybody, Annette here at Our Way Farm in a little bit better mood today. And so I thought I would try to do something, see if I can get some interactions and some comments back, some feedback. Um, we're starting to, obviously it's Jan, no, it's not, it's February. We are starting to come up with our plans for what we're doing this spring. We're just going to assume that everything is going to go exactly as we want it to and nothing else is going to happen and we're not going to continue to have dead vehicles and house issues and frozen and at some point in time we're going to get through all this bad weather nonsense. As you can see it's a tad bit windy up here on the hill today um, but that's part of the beauty I guess of living where we do. It's a windy area. We're on the side of a mountain and we've cleared most of the trees away from the house so that I can still sleep at night at least a few hours when it's windy and not have to worry about a tree dumping over on our house. So anyway, what I want to talk about today is back behind the house, as you can see the house is right there. That's the front of the house, well the front view of the house, that is going to remain yard. Eventually it'll have grass planted and everything else. Um, our solar panels are right there. Again, the back of the house. So our dead car is still sitting on the trailer because too much else has happened to get to it. Where I'm concerned or not concerned, what I don't know what to do with is I've got this tract right here and it is a triangular shaped section. It literally goes from that corner the whole way back up to right there. It's a uh, decent soil. I don't know, it's maybe a hundred feet over to the back corner, back through the, the woods there. We have run pigs in here. They do fantastic because in the summertime, all those annoying little bushes that I don't know what they are, but I don't like them because they're just spindly and in the way and whatever so sorry I'm trying to not fall on the ice because as you can see we have mud but we still have significant amount of ice it's it's a nice day today I think we're up to like 40 degrees so everything's starting to slop out which is whatever it's again I don't know I think we have like three mud seasons a year but we have this this piece of property and I'm trying to decide if I want to have it completely cleared. I don't want to put the pigs back up here because they have a space down below if we need to. At least it's a good space for butchering or for holding right before butchering. Um, we have woods over behind the garden that I can use to run pigs in. And I think that's where I would rather have them. I like having the pigs up top by the house more. Uh, the edge of it. I guess I'm zoomed in. That trench is water runoff from a mountain spring. We trenched it down so that it would quit running out the driveway. So the this triangular piece stops down here at those big rocks right there. And then it goes, like I said, it goes over to that back corner. Um, I don't know if I want to clear this out completely, if I just want to clear those bushes out and fence this off and run chickens in here, just make it a permanent chicken yard. Um, I love having free range chickens. The problem with free range chickens is they go lay their eggs everywhere but where you want them to. So we've always had free range since we moved up here to New York. Um, they've always had a house, a coop. They just choose to not use it. Ooh, almost fell. Sorry. Um, yeah, they choose to not use it. So I'm thinking about fencing this area in as a permanent chicken yard. It's, really windy. it's also really windy, so I apologize for the wind noise. But um, the other option that we have is to have this completely cleared trees, all the trees taken out, level it, pull all this extra mounded dirt that we have 
Because remember, our property had, has always been timber property. So it is a lot of push off. You can see there's another big mound right there. Um, that's probably three feet high. That one's a couple feet high. That one up there under that IBC tote, that's, you know, it's got decent elevation on it also. So um, if we take this, level it out, use that push off dirt as backfill behind the house, that would obviously be very beneficial. The other option is we can turn that, if we clear it and level it off somewhat, we can use this as additional garden space, which that would be amazing. Or we could put cabins in here for our kids uh, to use when they want to come up to visit. Because we have six kids. Only one of them lives here. The rest are all adults. So if we put six little cabins, just micro cabins in, you know, there'd be a nice little space here in the middle. Have a little fire pit area, whatever. Give them a place to stay that they don't have to pack tents and or car tent, or car camp rather, or any of that stuff. They would just be able to stay in their own cabin. And then we would also be able to do a VBRO, Verbo, I don't know how you say it. I say VBRO, whatever. Or an Airbnb type thing for off-grid weekends for anybody that wants to come visit. Um, they would be 100% off-grid, you know, just... Uh, no, I don't know that we'd necessarily run any type of electric to them. It would probably be more legit, traditional, off-grid, you know, little little stove, wood stove or something in to keep some heat in. And, I don't know, oil lamps. I don't know. Haven't gotten that far, so we haven't figured out exactly what we want to do. But I love the whole old-school little house on the prairie cabin style, you know, where it's completely completely off grid. We're off grid in the sense that we're not connected to any public utilities. We still have to go get propane to run our stove and our water heater. I guess technically that makes us sort of on grid, but we're not connected to the uh, electric company. So, so anyway, those are my thoughts about this space. I don't know what to do with it because to me they're all good ideas and I just don't know. This little bad boy here, um, <laughs> this was our little greenhouse that we made, and obviously the plastic's all rotted out. It's two years old now. But this was made of pallets, and it was a quick throw together. I think Joe and I did this in like four hours. Um, some shelves, he made some blocking boxes. My biggest problem with this is this support ledge right here. I have to climb under it. He had to do that as a uh, cross tie so that, you know, the sides wouldn't fan out too much. But that makes it really difficult for me with my hip. Um, I have arthritis in my hip and a bad back. And, you know, after you have so many kids, your body's like, no, screw you. I'm done. I'm not, I'm not doing any more for you. And that's pretty much where mine is at. So, um this back around. This is from the downside of this triangle. And I'm going to try to go down here without falling. It's just a slight decline. Nothing significant, but again, I'm, well, I'm in the wrong boots for one thing. Because I have my cowboy boots on instead of my mud boots or snow boots. So that's poor thinking on my part. But... This is that space. This is the back side of it. And I am really torn. Really torn as to what to do to, with this. I just don't know. I don't know that we need enough chickens. I mean, we definitely are going to uh, raise some meat birds this year. We haven't been able to for the last year. The year before that, we tried to. And there were some feral cats that kept coming up. Because we had them down below in the pastured area and uh, feral cats kept coming up and killing them. So they wiped us out with uh, of uh, 30 meat birds and 20 some layers. 
Look at that sky. Wow. It is gorgeous. It's windy as heck, but it is gorgeous. Sometimes, you know, life gets kind of shitty and sometimes you feel like you almost want to give up and that's usually when I grab the camera and come out and just remind myself how fortunate we are with this property. This is uh, most definitely our dream property. I think if I had to do it again, I might go space slightly warmer or less windy. I don't know. I'm not... I'm not a cold person anymore, so the cold doesn't bother me as much as I just don't like the wind anymore. It's kind of weird. But this space is supposed to get dug back down. You can see we've got a, this is runoff from Mountain Spring. Back there is a runoff from Mountain Spring. And this pond over here, it's kind of hard to see. There it is. That is also runoff. So we had started when we had the D4. We had borrowed a D4 dozer from my husband's old work to clear out for the house. We started to dig this out. The, the goal is to dig all of this out. Back out a little bit. Get all these lumps and bumps and everything out and turn this into an actual pond. Um, I'd like to stock it. I'd love to be able to, hey, I want fish tonight, go out and catch some bass or sunnies or I don't know. I don't know much about fish other than I enjoy eating it. So that's the goal is to, to turn this. This actually leads back into a trail. You can see all of the tracks the dog's been out running. But that trail back in there goes the whole way up around the property and takes you down to the very bottom of the property. What, that wind's blowing hard enough it's uh trying to knock the phone out of my hand so, i'm gonna get off of here i guess um if you guys watch this and you have any suggestions for that space let me know what you think because i can see the benefits of each of those suggestions chickens are going to fill our freezer and our egg cabinet we don't have an egg cabinet but our egg supply um they're going to feed us um, potentially a little bit of an income, not much of anything, because pretty much everybody around here has their own chickens, so selling eggs here isn't, isn't going to be a whole lot. Um, but cabins would be great for the family with a potential of some income. Um, long term, our goals are to do some classes, some workshops. I would love to do some butchering workshops. Um, I have some friends that are butchers. I'd like to have them come up and do stuff like that. So that would definitely be, you know, a benefit and a perk to be able to have some place for people to stay without having to stay 20 minutes away down in town at a hotel. Um, but I also, they'd sit idle, you know, reasonable amount of time because kids only come up a couple times a year because everybody lives far away and of course if we turned it into garden space that would obviously feed us it would help us with the farm stand giving us additional space to grow so I don't know this over here needs cleaned up obviously it's winter time but this section our garden is going to come out from the end of the camper going to come out here to that trail and kind of square off a little bit. So this is going to be the potatoes and sweet potato patch over on this side. I'm so excited for snow to go away so that we can start to get out here and get some manure down and some lime. I think we have to lime it this year um, and see what's going on. And then... We have, we expanded the garden the whole way back to this line, right back in here. And then of course the garden that we had last year, we expanded that back. So um, I think I measured it out. It's something like a 50 by 70 space. 
something like that. So I have it all mapped out in, um, I use almanac.com. I use their garden planner. It's a biannual subscription. Um, I don't remember 30 bucks a month or $30 a year or something like that. But for me, with all the information that it provides for companion planting and everything else, um, and, and the, the grid map that it gives you to lay out to actually get everything to size, that's just hugely beneficial for me. See, we have a few little miniature um, tools in here. Little potato row thingy. I don't know what they are. Joe bought them. I don't remember. Um, but this is all push off from timbering and when we cleared where the camper is sitting. And then we have this section back in here that I want to put pigs in and run them in there because I just think that's a really great space. I love running pig in, uh, in the woods. It's just a really good, it makes them happy. It gives them shade and protection. Um, lots of stuff for them to root in. So I guess that's about it. Um, because honestly my hand's freezing right now from holding this. So tell you what, as many issues as we've had and as slow as building the house is going, I don't miss the camper. We spent a year and a half in that camper and, you know, all things considered, that seems to be a new slogan lately, all things considered, we're doing great. All things considered, we were pretty comfortable in that camper, you know, every day we learned something new to make it better. Every day we were able to make it more comfortable, warmer, you know, all that. We weren't, other than space, we weren't uncomfortable. We learned that we don't need 90% of the crap that you think you need. It's it's pretty amazing that you find out, you know, in a situation like that, how much you actually don't need. I think we get suckered into buying shit all the time. Like, oh, look at this new gadget. And, oh, if you, you know, you spend $150 on this new kitchen tool, you can do chop your onions in a fraction of the time. You don't have to worry about, you know, tears or anything like that. Well, okay, that's cool. But by the same token, there's really nothing wrong with using a cutting board and a knife. Like, is it going to take me a little bit longer? Yeah, probably. But the uh, dogs brought up the twine, the wrap from the round bale. I don't know where they found it. And it may have actually just blown out of a truck, I don't, or out of the tractor or something. But they brought it up and we're playing with it, so I'll get that in. But, um, I really appreciate, there's been a lot of people that have just started following us lately on Facebook, Instagram, we're on TikTok now. Um, we've had new subscribers to our website, I've been trying to put out a daily blog on for the month of February for um, just tips on growing your basic vegetables. I don't grow all the fancy stuff. Someday I will. Right now I'm still learning. I'm still trying. And I don't want to grow a bunch of stuff that I don't even know if we like it. So, because that's, that's just a waste. Unless the animals will eat it. If we don't eat it, it's just kind of a waste of time and space and energy and money and everything else. So, um, but I am trying to get the, a daily blog out, which I guess I actually need to go do because I forgot about it for today. Oh, well. But what I was saying is we've had a lot of new followers and subscribers and somehow I got into a network of amazing homesteaders on Facebook and it's every day you know the channels grow and the, the page is growing and we're not huge by any means we're still you know under a hundred subscribers on YouTube but I think it started I started it oh, crap. that's cold too I think I started the channel seven months ago I think this is when I post this one it's gonna be video 38 or 39 shorts so you know 
I haven't been real diligent. And look at that view though. Dang. Sorry, I get sidetracked with the views around here. Um, I'm just very grateful. I feel like the people that have gotten involved with us recently, they feel like family, you know, and, and maybe it's just a common thread because we're all trying to do the same thing. We're all muddling through the same shit. We're all trying to learn. And I made a post yesterday that to be self-sufficient requires community. And it's really ironic. And we're not people to ask for a lot of help. And, you know, maybe, maybe past life trauma, maybe just who we are. Maybe we're just both so controlling and independent that it's easier to do it ourselves than to have somebody else come and do it and screw it up. I don't know. Probably a combination of everything. But to have the outpouring of love and support and connection that we have received in the last, I'm going to say in the last several weeks, honestly, is where all of the new people came from. But the love and the support and the connection that we've had with all of our old friends and family and everybody that has supported us for the past two years and three months that we've been up here. We just want to say thank you. Um, I know most everybody thinks we're insane. Okay. I'll own that one. We are. But following the norm doesn't work for us. We're not that kind of people. And, you know, you got to feed your soul. And when you work, spend your life working, and it doesn't nourish your soul, it makes you miserable, then that's not where you need to be. And even if everybody else thinks that you're crazy, even if you may think that you're crazy for the idea, or to think that maybe you could, maybe you probably shouldn't, if it scares the shit out of you, please go do it. Please go do it. Like... There's just, this life is so short, you know. I see people every day that so-and-so died. Somebody else passed away. This person was 25 years old. All these influencers, TikTok and Instagram influencers, dropping over dead, you know, in in their late 20s and 30s. And whatever the reason may be that they're passing away, life is freaking short. So who the hell cares what somebody else thinks about you? Go do what you want to do and be happy. You know, as, as long as you can go to bed every night and feel good about yourself, one little win a day, that's all that matters. So, that's it. I'm going to stop my rambling. Um, I'm watching little Willow come out from under the house right now. The back house, back of the house is not closed off yet. We just kind of ran out of time. As you can see, we're running a cinder block retaining wall around. We just ran out of time. So switch gears and focus on something else for the winter to get us in before winter so i mean we were in the house to get set up for the winter so on that note i hope everybody takes a chance today i hope everybody steps out of, outside of their comfort zone for one thing every day um you know even if it's something as much as simple as trying a different flavor of coffee Step outside your comfort zone once a day. You may not like it. You may fall in love with it. But it would definitely be worth at least trying. So, um, follow along. We are, again, I'm Annette. My husband's Joe. My son's Xavier. We are in our late 40s. We are off-grid. 273 acres in New York on the side of a mountain southwestern New York and we are doing this by ourselves you know for the most part you now we get some help here and there but for the most part we're doing this by ourselves and we're building it and we're making it work and we're learning so much um, if you guys have any feedback on what we should do with that piece of property back there there it is there it is back there let me know leave a comment 
hit the like button hit the subscribe if you haven't already if you have thank you guys so much we really appreciate it i love seeing everybody on facebook and seeing that they're all coming over and supporting us and we're supporting them and so but follow along hit the little bell and i will see you guys later have a great afternoon bye